Since 1994, the United States uh, has been a close ally of Rwanda, from the 42nd president uh, of the United States, Bill Clinton, to George W. Bush, to now the 44th president, Barack Obama. Uh, the U.S. Um, has chosen to support Rwanda, to be an ally of Rwanda, and today we're honored to have the presence of uh, the American the representative of America at this event, Ms. Cynthia H. Aquete. She's currently the Deputy Assistant Secretary of, of uh, Department of State in the Bureau of African Affairs. She's previously served as a Director of the Office of Europe, Middle East, and Africa in the State Department's Bureau of Energy Resources. Prior to assuming this position, she has served as a Director of the Office of Central African Affairs, Deputy Chief of Mission in the U.S. Embassy in Abidjan and Burkina Faso. Cynthia holds a BA with honors from CW Post College of Long Island University and a master's in national security resource policy from the Industrial College of the Armed Forces at the National Defense University. Ms. Aquete. First, allow me to extend my sincere gratitude to Ambassador Kimonio for his invitation. Words do not sufficiently express how honored I am to stand together with you as we grieve with sad and heavy hearts the lives of more than 800,000 innocent women, children, and men who were savagely slain 19 years ago. I am humbled to join you as we collectively pay respect to the survivors of those horrific events. The impact the genocide had on Rwanda and the entire world simply cannot be measured. It was indeed a barbaric act that will forever stain the books of world history. And it is tragic reminder of the depravity of which human beings are capable. It is impossible for me personally to comprehend the magnitude of your pain and loss today and every day since the genocide occurred. While we cannot bring back the victims lost, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, children, nieces, cousins, neighbors, and friends, we can and we must continue to bear witness as we are today that a horrible evil occurred. And we can and we must together ensure that genocide never again occurs in our lifetime and the lifetime of future generations. While we cannot change history, as we have heard, Rwanda has shown the world that it is possible to shape a brighter future. The theme of your commemoration program this year focuses on striving for self-reliance. No one, and I mean no one, who witnessed those 100 days of continuous bloodshed as the world did, could possibly have imagined that the survivors, left traumatized and broken, could have found the strength, the will, and the sheer determination to pick up the pieces and to rebuild their lives and their country. But that is just what you have done. In just 19 years, Rwandans have restored and improved opportunities for education and have worked to bring about significant public health improvements since the genocide. You have become one of the strongest leaders in the region on issues such as combating sexual and gender-based violence and promoting the economic and political empowerment of women. Rwanda's contribution to the UN peacekeeping operations in Darfur and South Sudan have been critical towards achieving, I'm sorry, towards resolving the long-standing conflicts there. We applaud your country as it strives for self-reliance and to become stronger, wealthier, and economically independent, more developed and more educated. There is little doubt that Rwandans will continue to prosper in the days and years ahead. As we honor and pray for those who died and pay tribute to the survivors, let us renew our commitment to ourselves and to each other to ensure that genocide never occurs again 
and to continue to uphold the memory of the events in 1994 as a reminder to us all the insurmountable cost of intolerance, of hatred, and of indifference. Thank you so very much for the opportunity to be with you today.